Is it possible for the Bible to be rewritten by artificial intelligence? That's the subject that we will explore on this edition of the Absolute Truth Absolutely podcast. I welcome each and every one of you to this new edition. Once again, presenting this edition's topic to our audience is your servant in Jesus Christ, Gio. I was reading this article a few days ago, and I wanted to share my thoughts with you on the matter. AI could rewrite the Bible and correct religion. This is what Yuval Harari, whom is probably one of the most prolific members of the World Economic Forum, this is what he stated recently through a podcast, and this is brought to us by the Cauldron Pool. In a few years, there might be religions that are actually correct. Just think about a religion whose holy book is written by an AI. This is the quote from the World Economic Forum member and professor of history at the Hebrew University in Jerusalem, Yuval Noah Harari said in a few years, AI could correct religions by rewriting the Bible. During a live recording of the show, It's Not That Simple, held May 19th in Lisbon, Portugal, Harari told journalist Pedro Pinto that AI is the first technology ever to create new ideas. Now, this is an outright lie, but first I'd like to read the entirety of the article, and then I'll proceed with a comment on what I've read to the audience here. As such, Unlike previous printing and broadcasting technologies which are incapable of determining whether the Bible is good or bad, AI, according to Harari, possesses the power to correct religious beliefs. Quote, you know, the printing press, radio, television, they broadcast, they spread the ideas created by the human brain, by the mind. They cannot create a new idea. Gutenberg printed the Bible in the middle of the 15th century. The printing press printed as many copies of the Bible as Gutenberg instructed it but it did not create a single new page. It had no ideas of its own about the Bible. Is it good? Is it bad? How to interpret this? How to interpret that? AI can create new ideas. It can even write a new Bible. Throughout history, religions dreamed about having a book written by a superhuman intelligence, by a non-human entity. Every religion claims our book, all the other books, of the other religions humans wrote them, but our book, no, 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 no. It came from some humor, superhuman intelligence. In a few years, there might be religions that are actually correct. Just think about a religion whose holy book is written by an AI. That could be a reality in a few years. Now, the article writer for the Cauldron Pool writes a small commentary. Okay, but surely nobody would fall for that. Who'd look into an AI chatbot for the answers to ultimate questions about God, morality, and life after death? Well, it turns out that there's a market, unfortunately. Last week, it was reported that hundreds of believers attended a church service generated by ChatGPT, and preached by an avatar of a, quote, bearded black man on a huge screen above the altar, end quote. More than 300 people packed into St. Paul's Church in the Bavarian town of Fruth on Friday morning to attend the experimental Lutheran church service that was almost entirely generated by the chatbot. One wonders if the so-called local priests are seeing the very replacements and in what we would call idiot fashion are presenting this as a novelty <laughs> to that so-called congregation or maybe this is all by design let the ai speak and we charge for as it were presenting the ai maybe i'm the one who's not seeing the profit margins in uh, this new model anyways the 40 minute service included a sermon prayers and music 98 percent of which originated from the machine so ai is not just replacing humanity it's not replacing the work of the holy spirit of course the only churches that will be excited about this are those churches that God long ago abandoned. And AI services may just work as a good marker of those godless gatherings that would rather be ruled by technology than the God they're pretending to serve. Harari has long dreamed of such a world ruled by technological decree. He is a technocrat and so is the World Economic Forum. During the 2018 presentation at the annual WEF meeting titled, Will the future be human? Harari claimed that within a decade or two, algorithms could be used to determine if teenagers are homosexuals, quote, in denial, end quote. Quote, when I was 21, I finally realized that I was gay after living several years in denial. This is not exceptional. A lot of gay men live in denial for many years. They don't know something very important about themselves. Now, imagine a situation in 10 or 21 years when an algorithm can tell any teenager exactly where he or she is on the gay straight spectrum. Now, I'd like to use this last point of the article as the lens that we will examine 
Harari's declarations through because this is the very point and purpose of what he says. Now, understand that there is a dissembling by Harari here. There is intentional, intentional manipulation of the facts. But I'll first start by commenting on this so as to make it clearer why he says what he says about AI replacing the Bible and creating a new religion. Think about it. We live in a generation where the so-called experts of our day and age are trying to remove parental authority so that the so-called experts whom wish to groom children to become sexualized, it would be easier for them to create prey for themselves. And I think everybody understands what I mean by this. If you look at it from that vantage point, it behooves people like Harari to convince others that AI is an independent thinking agency, meaning that the AI has a will of its own. It has, as it were, no creator. That's the implication of it, by the way, which we inherently know that's not true. Artificial intelligence not only has its creators, but it has its programmers. And it doesn't think, quote unquote, it actually just responds in the way that the programmers write its program. That's what ChatGPT is all about, by the way. ChatGPT and other assorted chatbots are nothing more than what the programmers program the algorithms to spit out. But herein lies the lie, as it were. Notice that he talks about an algorithm telling a teenager exactly where they are on the gay straight spectrum. In other words, if this teenager were to approach ChatGPT and ask it, what am I? the result is going to be whatever the programmers have programmed ChatGPT to say. It's not an independent agent. It's not a human being with his own will telling others what he thinks or she thinks that the person ought to hear. We're not speaking here, as it were, of a person. We're speaking about a program. But herein also, as we look at this more profoundly, is where the lie lies. Harari is trying to intimate, he's implicitly putting this forward, also explicitly in a sense, but he's trying to convince people that artificial intelligence, once again, is this independent thinking entity that is going to inform humanity about everything that it needs to know. Now it harkens back to what the beginning of the article, the gist of this article is all about. In a few years, there might be religions that are actually correct. What is he saying by implication that the Bible is incorrect? Remember, Harari, along with his cohorts at the World Economic Forum, these are recalcitrant atheists. These people hate God. And when we speak about God, we're speaking about the God spoken of in the Bible, in the tradition of Christianity, in the tradition of what we understand the Bible to be. And this is a man whom has spoken, Harari, continually against Jesus Christ. He has spoken continuously against Christianity. And therefore, when he presents AI, having the ability to rewrite, as it were, or present a new Bible and present the correct notions of religion, he is inherently lying by saying to people that artificial intelligence is going to create it from scratch when this is a lie. Artificial intelligence only puts out what its programmers program it to say. Therefore, it'll be people like Harari and others of his ilk, of his inclination, who will put together these chatbots, leading people to believe that the artificial intelligence is some independent thought or mind that is basing itself exclusively on facts, giving the people the results that this independent mind is giving them, when all the opposite is true. It's a smokescreen. It's nothing more than a digital smokescreen, except you don't see the puppeteers. The puppeteers are the digital masters whom are writing these algorithms, and therein lies the point. Furthermore, if you think about it, the blasphemy that Harari advances is ever worse because now he's presenting the artificial intelligence as the superhuman intelligence, deifying the AI. Do you where did he say that? Some might protest. Quote, AI can create new ideas. It can even write a new Bible. Throughout history, religions dreamed about having a book written by a superhuman intelligence, by a non-human entity. Every religion claims our book, all the other books of the other religions, humans wrote them, but not our book. 
It came from a superhuman, some superhuman intelligence. Notice that he is saying that this new Bible that artificial intelligence will write will be by divine inspiration, thereby conferring divinity on this artificial intelligence. I mean, this is nothing new. The transhumanists, such as Harari is, they themselves have spoken about how their transcendence of their humanity would lead they themselves to become divinities because man has been able to put forth the technology that would make him or her or whatever they are, whatever the heck they identify as, as divine. I mean, it goes back to the lie in Genesis. Has God said, we see this repeated, the spirit of the same, the spirit of Antichrist over and over again in the declarations of men like Harari. Therefore, as Christians, we should not fall for the snare of these of these demons, of these antichrists, of which John tells us people like Harari are evidently of that very same spirit. Now, the last question I'd like to address during this edition of the podcast has to do everything with where this leads us as a church, because evidently, as is mentioned in this article, there was a Lutheran congregation that engaged in listening to a sermon completely written by chat GPT. I'm going to hearken back to something I said earlier. The, the, the deception will grow ever more because of the infatuation that modern society has with all things technological. And the people that are writing these programs, that are writing these chatbots, they know that there's a market for this, as the article writer himself also recognizes. And they note that if they can convince people that this is once again an independent mind, artificial of course, that can teach people the truths of things, those manipulated souls will think I'm receiving the absolute truth from this digital mind that's teaching me all these things, removing, as it were, the human element, when in fact, again, it's nothing more than another instance of The Wizard of Oz. It's funny because when you when you see the film, uh, it, the, Oz is presented, as it were, as this superhuman figure, to use the phrase, that Harari uses, and it's nothing more than a puppet master behind the curtain that's pulling levers and pressing buttons to present uh, whatever it is this wizard, as it were, uh, is, when in fact it's only a man that is, again, at the helm, controlling the image. It's a puppeteer. It's nothing more than an illusion. I believe that the fact is people, many Christians, will be taken by this, unfortunately, because they don't ground themselves in scripture. They will be influenced in this way. And I guarantee you, there will be pastors, churches, laymen who will say, why can't we have more of this in church? And this will become a trend. Now, lest I discourage you, remember that Paul himself wrote to the Corinthians that heresies needed to be present among the congregation. Why? to distinguish between those whom are approved and those whom are not approved. Therefore, if you wish to show yourself approved to be able to see these things for the satanic machinations that they are, you need to ingrain furthermore what the scriptures have to say. Become more familiar with the text so that it would make it easier for you to discern these things for what they are. Nothing more and nothing less than man trying to ascend to the level of divinity, similar to what we saw in the Tower of Babel. It's just now it has the technological facade to make it appear as if it's this newfangled idea, but at its heart, it's still the very same idea. We're going to ascend to heaven and we're going to become gods ourselves. That's all this is, ladies and gentlemen. Let us not blaspheme. Let us not take our Lord's, our beloved Lord's name in vain. Neither let us believe that like Lucifer did, or he thought, I can ascend and I can take God's throne away from him. This is very dangerous. Continue to discern, continue to think your way through these things in a biblical manner. That way you would not be ensnared by the devilish designs of people like the World Economic Forum, Yuval Harari, and others whom advance these ideas. I hope this helps you. I hope this allows you to view things in a biblical manner. Please share this podcast with others through Telegram, through Twitter, through other social media sites, over through email, the link, share it with others so that they too may know the absolute truth in this world full of uncertainty. Until the next occasion that we gather for these episodes, may the Lord shine his face upon you. Thank you.